looking to get prints like these off your artillery x1 stay tuned and find out how <laughs> everybody Chris Sergeant Taz here and today I'm gonna to go over how I set up my MKS S Gen L board with Marlin so I can enable the M600 commands and change my LCD to be able to use those commands without being blocked by the standard TFT that comes on the artillery um, yeah the goal is to get to here two colors of filament without a lot of blotching so I will go over the basic setup of Marlin for this MKS board, which does translate over to the SKR board as well. It's going to be different settings, though. Keep that in mind. At the very end of my explanation, I go into the wrong folder, and I note it. Just so you're aware, it works the same way. Okay, what did I have to do to get this working? with Marlin 2.0 so I downloaded the MKS Marlin bug fix and loaded it up in VSC using platform IO We're going to configuration H and I'll show you where I hit, did some of my changes so define the serial port negative one define the, the second one down here at zero and I like to mark them so I know I did it with my initials. Change the baud rate to 115 200. Your motherboard is going to be MKS S Gen L because this is the 32 bit version. Custom machine name if you want. I named mine the Artillery SWX1 because that's what it's going in. So I did mark it with my, my name so you could see it. This is how I keep track of my changes. The TMC 2209s were all put in where they belong. Invert X direction to true. Invert Y direction to true and Z direction to false. And then EO invert is true. Or else you're going to have everything going backwards. And that's all I had to do in here. Well, I did change the uh, preheat constraints because my PLA, I don't think I need to go over 60. It was up to 80, which I think is too high. So I put that down to 60. ABS is 110, so that, that's fine. Keep in mind this is basic, so I didn't really do anything major in the way of using controllers. Um, I think that's it. Double check. Oh, because I'm using um, the Ender 3 stock display to find CR10 stock display. So this is going to be where you change whatever display you get. I went with the LCD from my old Ender 3 Pro because I had an extra one. So that's what I'm using so I can enable my two color projects. I think that's it in here. Advanced H. So for the auto fan, because of the way the pinouts are, I did P, 
two underscore zero six for zero, and then for the auto fan chamber auto fan is negative one, and then I scroll down to fan m u x zero. That's p two underscore four. Or else you're not going to get your auto fan when you turn on your hot end. So you have to make sure you make that adjustment. And I enabled the advanced pause feature for the filament change. And you also have to enable the advanced park feature. So that works right. <coughs> So I think that's about it. I'll probably cut most of this out because I'm lost on where I'm at and I don't code well, so I usually mark everything, so I got it. Anyhow, once you're all said and done, you want to hit the little checkbox down here, do your build. And see if you got any problems. I usually get a failure on it at first for whatever reason. If I hit it again, it should compile. I don't know. For some reason, the first shot on mine seems to do that. I don't know why. But now it's actually compiling the way it's supposed to. So, this you can keep connected to your computer. So, you can connect your printer to your computer via USB and upload it, which would be the little arrow down here. Once it's all said and done and building, you could upload it directly. What I tend to do. Um, I put it on C as a folder so I could find it. So this is the SGNL master. Go into firmware, go into your bug fix. And then if you go into PIO or dot PIO build LPC 1768 and then there's your firmware. So you copy this guy here, put him on the SD card, stick the SD card in your board and reboot your computer and it uploads everything you need to do really quick. Done. Fastest way to do it is to put on the SD card. Use the bin file, and then when it's done, I don't know if I got it plugged in still. No, I don't. But when it's done, it'll change to a cub file. I want to say it is. You'll see it, it once it's done it correctly. It'll be another. It'll be just be. It'll just say firmware, and it'll be a different extension. It won't be a bin file. So the bin file gets you what you want to get done. got Cura up and I've already sliced it so we're gonna go at 49 that's about halfway right so what I'm gonna do is go to extensions post processing modify G code add a script Go to filament change. Now, remember half is 49, so we'll set it to 49. Now you can see the little icon down here that you actually have the script change. Filament change, layer 49. My initial retraction on here is like 30 millimeters. Probably a little much, but it works. Slice it. 
26 minutes. So it's all set to go. I believe my octoprint's connected. Double check that. And we're all connected. So let's do a time lapse on it, just be fun, anyways. Print with Octoprint, and away we go. So as you can see, if you go to the G-Code Viewer, it will show you what's going on. It will also tell you where your layer numbers are at. So when I get to 49, I'm going to record my filament swap. Hopefully it works out well, and we'll see how it goes. As you can see, I did the filament switch, and now I'm running it clear with the black after I purged it out, which seems to be a clean swap. We'll see how it turns out. So as you can see, it's a pretty easy swap once you get things going and set up. It, 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 it works out really well. Um, it, it's a much nicer way of doing some of the filament swaps without having to try and pause at height and worry about dripping onto your freshly printed part with a different color. It gives you the purge option. So overall, it's worth the upgrade, in my opinion, um, to see if it's worth it to you. I appreciate you guys watching. Give me a like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And as always, see ya.